for everyone watching, this is very impromptu. Like we just decided after watching the match last night that this has to be talked about. Like we need to break this match down because unfortunately it's the end of the season. So let's like get a little more of their content out. But also, it's a very exciting match and uh, very kind of groundbreaking for different reasons. So um, we just thought, you know, let's do a short chat and kind of get into it. So uh, Gaurav, let's start off. Uh, we saw that Supernovas won the toss, and they they chose to bowl first. Um, now you had some other thoughts in the in the previous chat, and Smriti also said that she preferred batting first in any case. So what are your thoughts on the toss and the decision taken? Yeah, so and in hindsight, we can definitely say that it was a bad choice. But even if you are uh, trying to comment on what the situation was before the match, we knew that Sharjah is a slow wicket, and we knew that the Trailblazers they have a lot of slow bowlers. So the only way you you could count them properly was to bat on a fresh wicket for at least the first six to eight overs. Now the Supernovas by batting second they missed their chance. They had. Chamari Atta Pattu and Harman Preet and the others who who would have been fresh at that moment to actually capitalize on that, but but it was a bad decision at the end. I feel. Yeah, and uh, so let's just start off with the Trailblazers innings. We see um, the the entire inning saw eight boundaries and six, uh, three sixes, and majority majority of that came out of uh, Mandhana's bat. Uh, yeah. Just like you know, just your thoughts on her um, coming back to form in such a crucial game and how she led from the front. Uh, I think she was definitely class apart from all the batters. I mean, apart from her and Deandra Dotton, I don't think anyone even got to the double figures properly. And Deandra made only twenty. Smriti Mandana made sixty-eight of forty-nine balls on a pitch where one nineteen proved to be too much at the end. Right, so just by these numbers, you can understand the impact she had on the game, and her stroke play was so good on the offside. And I have seen Smriti Mandana a lot. I don't see her playing to the covers much. She she plays the cut shot brilliantly. But yesterday, her lofted shots over the cover were absolutely brilliant. And 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 from her frame, you will not know that she packs so much punch in her shot. I mean, her lofted drives were going over the boundary for a six. And they are full size uh, Sharjah boundaries, like sixty to to sixty five meter boundaries, right? And that's good enough for even the men's cricket. So Smriti Mandana definitely, I mean, she is a goddess on the offside, and a class apart. And if she wouldn't have played that innings, then I'm sure that the the Trailblazers wouldn't have made more than hundred runs. I mean, because you see, no one else apart from Mandana got going at all, and the uh, uh, captaincy was also on point so yeah she had a brilliant game yesterday yeah and um, she was hitting sixes so effortlessly we see deandra dotton and the other players trying to slog and reach the boundary whereas she would just time her ball so well yeah. and we were all watching and wondering like has she eaten something different or is her bat made of different material like what is happening because she really made it look really effortless and then in contrast the rest of the teammates actually looked Uh, really out of touch, and the collapse yeah. we see um, just happened very quickly. So it shows how good she was, and how she actually sort of carried the team, making sixty percent of their runs. And at the end, um, Hardeep Deol, after the after the presentation, she she kind of interviews Smriti and says, you know, what did you eat? And like, Pablo, <laughs> kitara, why are you hitting the ball? And she's like, it's been a while since I've gone mad like that. So just let it happen. Like, let me have yeah. a moment. I, and so yeah, we see that. Um, That was a really, really good innings, and um, it again like touches our heart that the Indian vice captain is doing that well. It shows that she has potential, um, even to lead the country uh, sometime down the line. Definitely. When Harleen asked, "Ki matlab tum kya kha ke aaye ho?" she said, "Ki wo dal chawal kha ke aaye." And I mean, if you can hit those sixes from only dal on from only dal chawal, then I mean, just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and um, on on like a, a bit of a sadder note, I personally have to say I was really upset that Chantam didn't get her uh, deserved batting spot yet again. And uh, you know, after a collapse, you need like you have to get your batters out. I mean, the staff and the players back her to pick her in your team, and then you don't put her out on the field. It's a bit disheartening, even for her as a player, and especially for mm-hmm. the Thai people watching back home or fans who want to see good cricket. So, what are your thoughts about? them just being ignorant to chantam and her talent 
and it's mind boggling to me that you can try ghosh at number 3 in the first two games but but when it is very clear that she's not able to do that role for you where you need a batsman who can stabilize the innings at number 3 and actually prevent that collapse from happening chantam could have done that and her 50 which came in the world cup tournament came against pakistan and pakistan has pretty good bowlers right so so definitely like chantam should have batted at like if not three then within the top six for sure and the fact that you are getting a thai player to play in an indian women's t20 tournament and you are not giving her a single game to bat at the position she deserves i mean it shows a i mean i i i, I don't want to put the wrong word here but it shows i mean the fact that you are not planning properly your batting order and the fact that uh, uh, i mean if if you have someone like a deepthi sharma then why would you have ghosh at 3 right and we all know that how good deepthi is with the bat and when the slow bowlers came and they applied the choke i mean it was really really hard for for not only like smriti mandana to bat for the whole team and that's where the inning stayed off to be honest yeah and i i mean it's it's a bit insulting like i i had like just i felt really bad that she came on yeah. at 19.5 stage with one ball left and everyone basically out i mean it's just not fair to uh, kind of have that but but like maybe a silver lining is that um, she impressed everyone on the field like even without batting or bowling she has you know cemented her spot in the 11 and it it uh, has really sort of trail blazed the way for the thai future <laughs> and the thai yeah. women are going to get a lot more eyeballs in the future game so that's that's a good sign and uh, natakam chantham you've done really well and we're all very proud of you and uh, we want to see you back at the women's t20 challenge next year absolutely um, and and the uh, fact that i mean we know that you can contribute with the bat and ball in the field but in but to contribute with in the field in such a way that people are talking more about chantham's uh, fielding than actually smriti mandana's batting and yeah. that was a super human effort itself and it says i think more about the fitness level in the thai team because if they don't have the fitness uh, to uh, play properly then that effort on the boundary line couldn't have been possible at all so uh, so i think a big congratulation is due to the thai team also for not only entertaining us during that t20 world cup but also yeah. like men maintaining that uh, fitness so they can actually come after the seven month long lockdown and perform in such a way yeah it's big kudos to them they'll take a lot of confidence from just this one player doing so well and um, hopefully we see a lot more competition coming in the future hopefully they qualify on a regular basis for tournaments and uh, let's move on to the, the supernova's bowling i mean i did pick poonam yadav as my highest uh, wicket taker unfortunately it was the other yadav that kind of took the spotlight <laughs> here um, what what do you have to say about radha yadav i mean a 20 year old is she like one yeah. in the future do you see that happening definitely and i mean she's 20 years old she has played two t2 t20 world cups she had played uh, she has played more than 35 international t20 matches and whenever harvan preet wanted a wicket or she wanted the runs to come down radha was given the ball so when a 20 year old is given so much confidence from her captain i mean it 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 shows immense amount of belief in her and definitely the potential is there that's why she is getting those chances and not only her bowling the the way she is very aggressive on the field and and she is always like uh, there in the game right and that is something we we associate with someone like a virat kohli or a harmanpreet kaur and we are seeing the same trends in radha yadav so definitely it's a great sign for future and what a story she has i mean uh, her uh, father was a was a migrant in bombay and and, and then from being a a uh, vegetable vendor daughter to actually like earning enough to buy a 3 bhk flat in baroda i mean what a story she has and it is her skill and the guile which she and the zeal which she has to play this game so definitely like a big big uh, congo to her i mean yeah yeah i mean you you're absolutely right the amount of hard work that she's put in and where she has come from to where she is right now in her interview she constantly says like she enjoys the challenge of being a death bowler and, and mm-hmm. of being given all the 
responsibility to actually you know contain runs or get crucial wickets and i think that mindset is very important that once a youngster has cultivated this mindset that hey i'm important and i'm going to take this responsibility up is really when they back themselves and um, you know do things like she has just done at the age of 20 which is like our age and it's it's a bit uh, yeah. it's quite amazing thank you Sorry, to exactly. see that happen yeah <laughs> So, um, so we kind of close out the first innings with, um, you know, Mandana at the top flying, mm-hmm. and then a seven-wicket collapse for just seventeen runs. And Trailblazers have sort of set a really sub-par total, or at least not what they were projected to reach. And Supernovas kind of in the changing room, I guess they would have, you know, taken more confidence out of this um, kind of containment that they did. And out comes Chamari Atapattu, and we see a new opening partner in Jemima Rodri. Mm-hmm. What did you make of that? Uh, so i think i mean it was coming when uh, when priya punia was not playing there so because uh, jemmy has played the in, in the slot before so uh, she was there to come but but i mean again uh, the fact that the pitch has slowed down so much and the way uh, uh, poonam and uh, uh, shashikala was bowling in the first inning it was pretty clear that the more slow you bowl the more wickets you will get i mean poonam yadav was bowling in the 50s at some point and that's like so slow that a car will reach dubai before the her ball goes on to the other end right so so it, so it was pretty clear from the start with uh, julan the julan being the only pacer in the team what they were going to do and they started off with julan but they also gave the ball to deepthi and sophie right right at the start because uh, chantam if anything i mean she is a bit very against space but yesterday sophie was brilliant i mean she, she got only one one wicket but she got the wicket of chamari atapattu who who was the key element in the supernova chase and the and the way she got her like i mean the change of pace was very rapid and what a brilliant review to be honest right and the and the fact that when um, jemmy was not able to get on with her boundaries at all and deepthi was again brilliant i mean deepthi and uh, uh, sophie at the start they were the key for the trail trail blazers because uh, we we see salma khatun getting the wickets at the end but the first top 3 wickets they were the key for the trail blazers to actually defend that small ta- small total right so yeah i mean uh, brilliant start from the uh, from the trail blazers i mean in the first six overs Yeah, and we see the power play really being the key for both teams, where Trailblazers made yeah. most of their runs in the power play, and that proved to be sort of the winning element. And similarly, they took crucial wickets in the power play. So when Chamari and Jemmy had come out, I was actually quite excited because we have power hitting mixed with like Jemmy's calm, sort of stabilizing um, yeah. force and presence. Yes, full batting. Yeah. But, uh, w- Yeah, and we see a really, you know, the probably the thing that made me the happiest was the DRS review. I think it's it. it uh, you have to have a lot of confidence in your abilities, in the communication of the bowler and the goal and the wicket keeper to actually take those calls within fifteen seconds. So I was really happy that um, yeah. Smriti took that call, and obviously, what a what a crucial wicket that was. I think the Trailblazers would uh, actually look back on that to be one of the the defining moments of their win there. Definitely. And um, one more question I had for you, uh, Gaurav, was um, Smriti said at the end again that you know she felt more pressure in the second innings while captaining the team and putting bowlers here and there, uh, while, instead of actually in the first innings while she was pretty much carrying the team on her back. So what 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 is what do you make of that? That the captain has such a crucial role in picking bowlers at the right time. Yeah, and I mean cricket is a very unique sport that way because in the other big sports like a football or a hockey, you don't see the captain playing such a big role. It's mostly the coach or the team manager actually like uh, uh, managing things from outside the field. But in cricket, captain like it's seventy percent captain and thirty percent the the plans you make with the team, right? So Smriti in her field placings and the bowling changes was very smart. uh the the fielding from her personally could have been better definitely i mean some uh, some uh, like wrong fielding catches and everything but definitely what we see from smriti is a good head on her like a very firm shoulders and the way she she changed the bowlers right at the end like uh making sure that uh, uh gaikwad and salma khatun bowl in the middle overs and that middle overs choke you know the the 
the the fact that they had a good start they had to capitalize on that start so gaitwad and salma khatun was so accurate in the middle that the supernovas couldn't even bat properly in spite of the fact that harmanpreet was was on the crease and she was not yet like uh, feeling some problems with her with, with her body at that moment so it was brilliant captaincy actually Yeah, and and you're right that um, Salma Khatun came in at a very crucial point where Harman was set yeah. and all ready to go, and the, the the move from Smriti to put a veteran Bangladeshi bowler like that on when she knows that you know uh, spinning is actually working, and we see her take uh, two wickets in an over and kind of seal the deal for the Trailblazer. So it was again good to see a smart captaincy right there and leading to a supernova stroke. Um, again, again, this innings, I have to just uh, put in Chantan's name there again. That Jemima catch, firstly, and yeah, that acrobatic sure. fielding save. I mean, that really caught headlines. What What do you think about that? I mean, the the fact that Chantam had to chase that long, like uh, I think uh, she was at sh- uh, short fine length, or and then from there she had to chase that long, and then. That that dive was so acrobatic. I mean, I could compare it to the Puran dive in the uh, IPL that that what we have seen, and it made people like Morgan, Joy, Joy Bhattacharya, and like everyone take a note of of her fielding, right? And and the fact that when you are when you have a name in India, your your uh, profile only grows from there. So I am so so happy for Chantam. I mean, the fact that she couldn't get a bat was was very sad. But the fact that you could con- you have three avenues to contribute in a cricket field, and she did very well in the third one, which is which is not always talked about a lot. But it was actually Chantam's fielding which gave uh, the Trailblazers the the edge ahead. I mean, right at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, and you uh, feel it can actually put a lot of pressure that's sort of not seen or not heard, but containing people and say when a batsman or a batswoman hits and says, "Oh, that's a four," and then suddenly realizes, "Oh, it's not." That kind of you know mentality, that mental pressure really comes in. And Chantam, although she had like one or two outstanding saves, she was consistently running to the boundary, picking up the ball, throwing it back. Like she was all over yeah. the field. It's um, it's just one or two instances which we see, but she was obviously like you know. Really tired and had really good stamina uh, as we see towards the end of the game. So um, another interesting point now. I mean, we see that supernova sort of you know just f- fade out and uh, Trailblazers take a 17-run win. Um, in one of the Crick Buzz uh, videos, uh, I was listening to Lisa Stalaker and she was saying that the Indian women have made it to the ODI final in 2017. They've made it to the T20 final in 2020. What's really missing is that win, right? It's that final win. And she said. What that needs is an extra gear to be picked up, and that will only happen when domestic cricket sort of solidifies. That that little gear is basically the WBBL. It's the Kia Super League. That's why England and Australia are able to do these. So how important? Like I, I have to again ask you, how important is it for the the Women's T20 Challenge to become not a tournament but a league and a season? I think it's the most uh, significant thing right now, which should happen in the female game in India, and the uh, Fact that I mean, the we had all the sponsors coming in, right? And that's definitely a good sign for the future because because the economic opportunities in the women's game are immense. And in the same show, like the Joy Joy Bhattacharya talked about the fact that the revenue model can be built on the fact that there are so many woke brands which uh, which uh, tries to work in a in a feminist way, so they could come into play and. And definitely will get the bid for minimum six franchises very easily. So the excuse that you won't get the bid is is doesn't works in the current economy at all because there are many companies who would be willing to do that actually. And and if anything else, I mean uh, the BCCI at this moment they need a different women's wing. The fact that you need a person who whose whose only job is to work on women's cricket in India, and we need a good astute person there. The fact that the BCCI doesn't have a women's wing it just shows the fact that women's cricket is an afterthought for them, right? Yeah. So so women's IPL going forward and some administrative changes in the BCCI itself. I mean, they are the way to go forward. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and BCC is so commercialized that, you know, they, their only focus is how we can make our money or how we can make the most money. That's why it's very cr crucial for uh, there to be a women's department, maybe even led by some ex-female cricketers or someone who has vested interest in the game. Um, yeah. Because you, you'll see that that sort of um, progress happen at double the speed, you know. I mean, they're doing what they can right now, but it's clearly not enough. And uh, again, you know, you talked about Mr. Joy Bhattacharya. He also said something very interesting where when a business or a franchise is sort of invested in a team, they actually go to the smaller towns. They look for that Jasprit Bumra or that Hardik Pandya. They Absolutely. find those people and they cultivate them into superstars. So yeah. that's going to happen with the women. We need the money and the backing. We need people to be emotionally and monetarily invested in this. That's when we're going to see returns. So it's very important to come, like, you know, scale this up into a, a franchise and a bidding system because that's really how we can improve our um, sort of system. Yeah, and the uh, fact that it's fine that the BCCI focus on the money aspect a lot. But it doesn't mean that uh, they can't actually uh, commercialize women's cricket in a way that they get uh, six women, uh, like a six-team tournament in from the upcoming year, right? And there are enough uh, financial backing which the BCCI already has for that. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, I think it's a good place to sort of conclude this chat where we say that basically again we need we need better planning from you, we need better investment. We need to see that you care about it because there are obviously a lot of people around the world who are watching this. There are sponsors who have come on board, so people um, obviously see this as an opportunity to invest in also. So I mean, yeah. it's high time. Hopefully, again, like next time we have this chat, it's going to be about six teams and many more matches. But uh, I wanted to end on some few interesting things that uh, we can take away, you know, outside of the cricketing aspect from this tournament. We see like Sophie Eccleston learning some Hindi from Harleen Deol. We see a lot of cultural <laughs> yeah. mixing here. And uh, we, I mean, we really see Shafali Verma does her first English interview with Danny Wyatt. So it's, it's yeah. very nice to see these um, women grow together and, you know, they'll be friends the next time they meet in an international competition. They'll... So they'll catch up, they'll say hi. So, and that's really how you see Virat Kohli, A.B. De Villiers are friends now. It, it's going to happen, you know, yeah. uh, for the women too. So that's, a, that's an exciting little bit. Definitely. And, and, and I mean, like, uh, even Chantam for that matter, that uh, Julan Goswami talked about the fact that how she's the most uh, chattiest in the, in the team room mm -hmm. and, uh, and everyone's always like talking around her, right? So, uh, when you have the international players mixing with the domestic players of India, I mean, that's the whole point of, uh, of an IPL or a, or a T20 challenge uh, tournament in the first place, where, like, uh, where domestic talents, they get international ex 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 exposure, actually, right? And the fact that there, there was a clash with the BBL this time, I mean, it, it hurts a lot because, uh, like, yeah. just think about an... Elise Perry actually coming and talking to a Pooja Vastrakar, like who 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 can be a budding all rounder for India in the future, right? And the the things and the amount of cricket which they can learn from those players is it is just too much to uh, not think about. So yeah. Yeah, and actually, you, you mentioned something. I, I want to bring it up again. It's a little more serious. In in the since there is there's no bidding or buying players, they've just been allotted into teams. But we see a lot of imbalance. Let's say in Supernovas, we have Ayabonga Khaka, we have Shakira Selman, and then we have two yeah. Indian pacers who aren't really getting opportunities because these overseas pacers have taken the slots. Absolutely. Whereas if Pooja Mastakar was in Trailblazers, she could have you know been alongside Julian Goswami, learned a lot, and probably got to play a little bit more. So, if, you know, we see how bidding and auctioning will actually help. Players will get bought on their speciality and will get put into the team and not just, you know, left on the bench, which was unfortunate for the, for the Indian youngsters. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's really another thing. Yeah. And the simple fact that a player like Devika Vadya or a, or a Shushi from uh, Bhuvaneshwar, I mean, these players are great and they have been performing in the domestic tournament for quite some time. And if if they would have got a chance to play the matches, I mean, the amount of skills they would have learned and the amount of uh, game time they would have had actually would have uh, propelled the Indian women's cricket a lot. And so, so definitely that's a point to be uh, thought about. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. So, so one last thing I have to say is yesterday someone messaged me asking me why do women bowlers, the spinners, not remove their cap while they're bowling, and why do the men remove it? So I, I said I gave a simple answer. I said that the ponytail kind of uh, gets spoiled to make your hair again. And uh, so, and then you kind of messaged me telling me something you noticed about Tanya Bhatia. Do you want to share that with everyone? Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that uh, she has a semi-circular cut at the back of the helmet to accommodate her pony, right? And I mean, those kind of small uh, things which which are very different with with the two games which we have. I mean, just shows that how how मतलब uh, how uh, fun it is to play the game and and how uh, uh, and and how different it is. And the fact that uh, the the helmet manufacturers should actually take a note of that and like they. they should start building helmets with a semi circular cut to accommodate the pony yeah yeah it might be a very good selling point you know a little bit yeah. of a little modification keeping all the safety measures intact of course but you know why not if, if you can make that small change that, that might be really cool and you yeah. might get tanya bhatia as an ambassador for your helmet definitely so, so that would be fun <laughs> god of thank you for chatting with us again this was great it was a little impromptu but very fun very informative yeah, i'm sure a lot yeah, of people definitely. took a lot of things away uh yeah, so thanks yeah, so much and, and have a good day yeah same here take care bye 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 god of